Good morning, class. My name is Dr. Chuck Wheatley. Unfortunately, your regular professor was called away unexpectedly, and I've been asked to fill in. Obviously, I'm not up to date on the current coursework. <coughs> Excuse me. And judging by the number of millennials in the audience, I'm guessing neither are you. <laughs> so with your indulgence, I'm going to do whatever I like. It's not like you're going to pay much attention, <coughs> but that's fine. Now, as it happens, I do have a presentation that I would like to share with you. Recently, a colleague of mine challenged me to solve an unsolvable problem. In his words, I am an insufferable know-it-all. Now, to be fair, he's right. <laughs> Nevertheless, the challenge was made. Wagers were placed, and I intend to win. But to be a good sport about it, I let him choose the question for me to solve. This is the question that he proposed. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. <laughs> Obviously, he thought it would be an amusing play on my name. And clearly, he was trying to be clever by choosing a rhetorical question. Nevertheless, I have found the answer. Not only have I found the answer, but I brought this presentation to help me prove it. Now, solving a problem like this is actually quite simple. All we have to do is break it down into its component parts. First, what is a woodchuck? A woodchuck is more appropriately known as a groundhog. It is a rodent in the family Scuridae. This family includes many small and medium-sized rodents, including uh, squirrels, chipmunks, prairie dogs, and most members of Congress. <laughs> Some other common names for the animal include the uh, ground pig, thick wood badger, Canada marmot, and the weenus. That is weenus with a W. Please do be drawn up. <laughs> the etymology of the name is quite interesting. It is unrelated to wood or chucking. It stems from the Algonquin name for the animal, Uchek. Second, what is wood? Ordinarily, I would skip such an obvious explanation. However, given the state of our education system, here we go. <laughs> wood is a porous and fibrous structural tissue found in the roots and stems of trees. In particular, we need to focus on the type of wood that a groundhog is likely to encounter. Their territory cover, covers most of North America, including <coughs> the heavily forested east and northern tundra. Now, these forests are largely composed of large hardwoods, such as pine, oak, beech, and poplar. And due to the groundhog's small size, it would be impossible for them to move large logs. So for the purposes of answering our question, I think it's reasonable to consider wood to be small pieces of these trees, such as twigs and branches. Third, what is chucking? In everyday language, chucking is just a synonym for throwing. However, in the sport of cricket, chucking is an illegal bowling action, which occurs when the bowler straightens, a mar, straightens his arm while delivering the ball. The laws of cricket state the bowler must not straighten his elbow. Only the shoulder can be used to impart velocity to the ball. Although groundhogs have been rumored to engage in a round of golf or two, there have, as yet, been no sightings on a cricket pitch. Next, we must look at the word could. Could is used to express conditional possibilities. For example, if elephants could fly, we would all be up to our ears in manure. <laughs> By placing the conditional if before could, we are implying that they cannot, which is obviously correct. Elephants can't fly. Thank God. The same applies to our question. If a woodchuck could chuck wood, implies that they cannot. This is correct. A woodchuck cannot chuck wood. Their forearms are powerful, but they are short and designed for digging. <clears throat> they do not possess the full range of motion required for a proper throwing action. For a full demonstration of his disability, please see my associate Juan Quina <laughs> Now that we have determined that a woodchuck cannot chuck wood, we must find the final piece of the puzzle, which is determine why they would engage in this behavior, if they could. Would a groundhog throw branches for survival? Groundhogs, unsurprisingly, are ground dwellers. They dig burrows for sleeping, hibernating, and raising their young. 
When confronted with danger, they retreat to their burrows and protect themselves with their teeth and claws. And due to the burrow's small size, it is uh, due to the burrow's small size, there's no room and no need to throw branches. Would a groundhog throw branches for food? Groundhogs primarily eat wild vegetation and low bushes such as berries, clover, alfalfa, and various agricultural crops. On occasion, they'll eat grubs, snails, or other insects they can find, but they don't hunt, and they only eat what is readily available to them. Throwing branches will not help a groundhog acquire any more food. Would a groundhog throw branches for mating or childbearing? Groundhogs do not engage in mating rituals or displays of attraction. On occasion, they have skirmishes over territory, but in those skirmishes, they just use their teeth and claws. The pups are born blind and hairless and spend about six weeks in the burrow. They learn by imitating the adults. Growing branches will not help a groundhog find a mate or raise their young. In conclusion, we determined that a groundhog cannot throw branches. We determined that even if they could, they have no reason to do so. Therefore, I believe the conclusion is obvious. <laughs> How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The answer is 42. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are still paying attention, I hope that you've learned something today about our friends the woodchuck. And for those still here, I'm, I hope that you've learned something that every question has a solution if you're willing to look for it. And finally, I hope you've learned never to bet against Dr. Chuck Woodley. <laughs> At this time, we are out of time for class. Class is dismissed, but remember, Uchek plan for life. <laughs> <laughs>